During the previous Arduino Basics 101 video, I taught you the 5 fundamental code commands of the Arduino software and what they can achieve once uploaded to an Arduino development board. And even though it is definitely fun to let an LED blink or determine the voltage on a digital pin, we are still pretty limited on what we can do, because we are missing so-called control structures. Most popular are IF, FOR, WHILE and SWITCH structures. By utilizing if, we can perform an action like pulling high a digital pin if a specific condition is met. In this case the double equal sign basically means equal. But there also exists the not equal, less than, greater than, less than or equal than and greater than or equal than comparison operators. But getting back to topic. Now if pin 10 connects to ground, the LED on pin 7 lights up just like we programmed it to do. But after removing the ground potential from the pin, the LED is still lit. What we forgot was to add an else structure, which pulls the LED pin to ground when the if condition was not fulfilled. And after uploading the new code and adding a push button to connect ground to the input pin, we successfully created our first microcontroller circuit with control structures. But at this point you might say we don't need a microcontroller for that and you would be absolutely correct. But if we go one step further and include boolean operators it gets a bit more complex. In this case the double ampersand represents the logical n and there also exists the double vertical bar for the logical or and the exclamation mark for the logical not. So this time after uploading the codes, the LED only lights up if pin 10 and 11 is connected to ground. But once again you could say, well I'll just take two switching parts in series to build the circuit without a microcontroller. And once again you would be absolutely correct. So to prove the usefulness of microcontrollers, let's remove the simple if condition and replace it with a counter condition. In this case the variable i must be lower than the number 3 in order to let the LED blink once and at the end of the action we increase the value of i by 1 which can also be written as i++. But while compiling the sketch an error message popped up saying that the variable i was not declared yet. To fix that we can define it global, so for the whole sketch, above the setup part. Here the word int represents a specific variable type known as integer, which can hold a 16-bit number. Other popular types are bool or boolean, which can either be 1 slash low or true slash false, the long type, which can hold a 32-bit number and the flow type, which can hold a 32-bit number as well, but with a decimal point. As an example, the millis function of the Arduino, which counts the milliseconds after the start of the codes, is stored in a long type variable. And thus, the maximum 32-bit size, which is a pretty big number to begin with, will be exceeded, aka overflow, after 49.7 days. But getting back to our example. By declaring the i variable with a start value of 0 in the setup section, the code compiled and uploaded properly and let the LED blink for 3 times and then did nothing else. Perfect! And instead of the if function and the additional variable increment line, we could simply use the for loop which combines the initialization, condition and iteration right at the beginning. As expected, this sketch does its job just fine as well, but as another example for the for loop, let's say we want pin 5, 7 and 9 as an output. Now of course we could simply define each individual pin in the setup section, but we could also create an array of integer variables, which contains the number of the individual pins. While defining the array, the content of the square brackets describes the amount of variables in the array and the numeration of the individual variables always starts with a zero. So by inserting the number of the required variable in the square brackets, we can select them individually. This way, by using a for loop, which counts from zero to two, we can define them all as an output 
without repeating the same line over and over again. And while we're at it and don't want to change the pin variables later on, we can change the integer type to a constant integer type. Next we got the wire structure, which in comparison to the if and for structure, loops a defined action endlessly until a certain condition is met, and then continues with the rest of the sketch as usual. And lastly we got the switch structure, which can perform different actions dependent on the value of a variable. This way we could light up three different LEDs dependent on which pin was pulled to ground through a push button. Now let's move away from those learning circuits for seconds and let's have a look at an Arduino FM radio that I built in a previous project video. If we take a look at the codes, we can see that there's quite a bit going on. So let's imagine we turn the rotary encoder one increment. By doing so, the two so-called clock and data pins get pulled down to ground one after the other for a brief moment that only lasts around 11.5 milliseconds. Only problem is that your microcontroller was currently sending data to the attached LCD and did not notice that the pins were pulled down to ground. That is where we use an external interrupt which performs a function whenever the defined interrupt pin, so 0 for pin 2 and 1 for pin 3 of the Arduino Nano, is either low high, changes, falls to ground or rises to the supply voltage. Doesn't matter whether the code is doing something else at the moment, the interrupt always has the highest priority. To create an executable function though, we can use the void variable type since our function will not return any variables. Then we simply fill it with what the interrupt is supposed to do and activate the interrupt through the attach interrupt function in the setup section. Now whenever the Arduino pin 2 changes its state, the LED changes its as well, even though there is a long delay happening in the code. And with that being said, you are now ready to try out your first Arduino project. If you like this video and want to see the final Arduino Basics 103 video, which will discuss libraries, weird lines of code in the setup section and more advanced tips, then don't forget to leave a thumbs up. As always, stay creative and I will see you next time.